What is up, y'all? Scott here. Hope you're doing well. Today, we are going to drill into my recent edit with Mark Matthews, Changing Seasons. I've had a lot of folks asking me questions about how we pulled this off, some of the techniques of editing, some of the techniques of shooting, color grading, audio, all that stuff. There's a lot of content, and I don't think I can actually fit it all into this one video. So we're gonna break this up into parts, probably do this in two parts, but we'll see how it goes. Today, we're gonna focus on talking through the edit and how I chose different shots, um, how we linked it all together and talk just a little bit about how the shooting went overall. So I've asked folks on Instagram for some questions that'll help drive this conversation and I have some things I wanna share with you as well. Uh, we'll get into the questions at the end of the video, but first thing, let's just start walking through the video from the beginning and we'll talk through each of the shots and some of the motivation behind those shots. First thing we're gonna look at here is the very first shot in the video. And I love this shot. It was just a cool frame to find. And I wanted something that started the video off with a lot of action. Um, and I wanted something that also had some movement in it. So we watch this first shot here. And you can see we've got this wall ride and then Mark comes ripping through the frame. And we've got really cool audio to kind of match up with that. And I pulled this one off with the Kessler Crane second shooter. So I had a really controlled movement through the frame as Mark came in. And the audio I really liked here because he, he starts far away and you can kind of hear that audio approaching. And that was going to lead us into this raw edit that I'm trying to create. So we start with just sort of ambient forest sounds and then you hear his bike rip by and it has this really cool sound on the wood, brings that intensity up right away. After he runs through once, he comes through again with a bit of a tighter shot. And the idea with this shot was just something that was a little bit more creative, um, nothing super fancy about it, but I liked the diagonal lines and just thought it was kind of a cool frame. So we went with that. Uh, there was a lot of questions about lenses and what lenses I was using. So I'll kind of walk through that with each frame, tell you what lens I use the best that I can remember. Uh, this one was definitely the Tokina 11 to 16, set fairly wide. So after this, we'll run forward here. And we come into this shot here. This shot is a chase shot. I'm on a gimbal. And the idea with this was just something that can connect to the next segment of the video. So probably shot on the Tokina or Sigma 18 to 35. But we use this as a filler because prior to this, we had set up a cable shot. And I'll show you the cable shot that we cut from the video. This cable shot took us a whole morning to shoot. Um, unfortunately, it just wasn't really very powerful. It kind of lacked a lot of interest. Um, so even though we put a lot of time into it, we decided that the, the coolest part is when he's actually coming out of that corner and it's where he looks the fastest. So on another day we came back and we actually, instead of using that shot, decided to pick up this shot here. And I think it works really well for that, that little piece. Um, the next shot here that we're getting into is a drone shot. This is with the Mavic 2 Pro. The idea here was to start leading into some wider shots that showed off the environment a little bit more while still keeping the pacing fairly high. These first few shots are a little bit slower paced, but I think that works at the beginning of the edit as we're, we're building into the higher intensity moments. So I'll play through a, a section of the video here and then we can talk about these pieces. four or five shots that make up this segment. So we first have this one where he's just kind of coming down the hill. And just as we're getting into that lower section, I just have this shot that's coming from the opposite way. So I frame this one up as more of an artistic shot. I like to do stuff where there's foreground elements out of focus. And then this shot I really love. It shows off this cool environment, this Pacific Northwestern jungle feeling uh, forest, which I, I like a lot. Um, this is on a gimbal. This is probably the Sigma 18 to 35. The one thing you will notice about this is there's fog back here. And we really wish we would have had this fog for all the days of shooting. It's an amazing backdrop to have a foggy forest to shoot in, but we only got this for about two hours. And I think this was probably the fifth day of shooting or something like that. And so I was okay including it in this shot because I don't think it's overly noticeable that it's foggy. But if, if we had shot a bunch of stuff and it was all foggy and then we had sunny days or just overcast days for the rest of the video, it would have been really juxtaposed and we probably couldn't have made that work in the edit. So in some ways it was fortunate that we only had fog for this one day. This shot leads into um, what I just call a blow by shot. So you just see Mark rip by the camera really fast. And what you'll notice is this is actually two different shots. So there's this one where he exits the frame 
And then there's actually a secondary shot where I'm handheld on the ground and I'm just panning with him. And this just adds some of that intensity. We've kind of gone in, you know, from a faster beginning, then we dropped down to some slightly slower shots and now we're bringing the intensity back up for the next sequence. So we go from this and then I'll play through this next part and then we'll talk through some of the ideas of why I edited it together the way that I did. All of the, the sections of this video, they're kind of are like little pieces, right? They're different chunks of the trail. And some of these aren't actually even connected pieces of the trail in the real world. So this is a trail network that we shot different features on different trails. And the idea is to link all that together into something that feels like one continuous flowing trail, even though they're completely different parts of the forest. And so I needed to get from this section of the forest that was really um, covered with leaves on the ground, really fall feeling, into this section of the forest where there's no leaves on the ground, um, doesn't, you know, it feels like fall, especially when you, you pull all the way out, you can kind of see some of the fall colors in the back. Uh, but it didn't feel as fall as that previous scene. So we use this bridge shot here where you can't um, actually see the leaves so much. It's just as fast ripping through the forest. And I like this because it conveys motion really well. And I just think these shots are really cool when the foliage is just whipping by the camera. Um, so that's why that shot is in there. It, it gets us from the really fall feeling shot into the next shot that has um, less of a fall vibe. One thing you'll notice about this, um, if you look carefully, you'll see there's actually this big orange yellow spot here. And that's because we had to shoot this shot on a really sunny day. Um, we didn't get good weather the entire time. In an ideal world, you're shooting in overcast conditions so that everything matches up pretty well. But we didn't get that here. I allowed that little bit in there because it wasn't super noticeable. I had to crank the color temperature down towards blue on this to make this scene not so warm feeling. Um, but I think it matched up fairly well. And that, that big bright moment is pretty brief. So this shot leads us into this one here, and this is to help with the directionality of the rider. Mark is moving from left to right in this frame here, and then the shot that we want to get to is this cable shot where he's moving right to left. And what I'll do is I'll put these right next to each other. The audio isn't going to match up here, but you can kind of see the issue that I have a little bit. So I'll play through this. So for me, it was a little bit jarring to see him going left to right and then immediately right to left. And so we put this shot in the middle where he's coming into the frame from the left side, but he exits kind of pointing towards the camera. He's almost turning back towards the left again. And that, for me, better connects with the next shot. And also the fact that it's static helps break up that camera movement that was a little bit jarring. So trying to find those connecting shots was something that I worked on as I was building the edit. So I'd, I'd go home every day, take all the footage that we captured that day, um, figure out how I thought it might fit into the edit and see if there were areas where we needed an additional shot to, to make the edit flow a little bit smoother. Um, now we jump into this one, which is a cable shot. This one was shot on the Sigma 18 to 35. This was actually the first shot of the entire video that we did. It was close to the vehicles and we we're just like, well, let's get this one out of the way. The trees were fairly spread apart. So it was a, a relatively easy cable cam to set up. And we actually nailed the shot on the second take, which is completely out of character for a cable camera shot. And we ran it a few more times, got the shots that we wanted and we moved on. It was uh, maybe from start to finish, we had these shots in the bag and probably two hours of setup and tear down and actually getting the, the shot. So uh, pretty, pretty pumped about that. I think the only thing I would have done differently with these shots, I did not have a polarizer on my camera at this point. For almost every other shot in the video, I have the polarizer turned on and you can knock that uh, shine off of the leaves and it will just look a little bit better. That's the only thing to these shots that I would have liked to change is just kind of tone that down. It'll saturate the green a little bit more um, and just make the shot look that much much more dialed in. Still worked out as a great shot. I love the trees blowing by the camera. I love the uh, asymmetrical framing here. We've kind of got them offset on one of the thirds. And we play through it twice just to really show him smacking that corner. Um, the, the tighter shot here, you can really see him, him throwing some dirt up. And then the wider shot is again, showing the environment a little bit, showing the cool colors that are in the background, all that sort of stuff. So 
Um, was really hyped to get that shot at the beginning, brought the energy up of the whole crew. We were pumped, like having that really cool shot in the bag. And then the last shot here, which is him just again, blowing by the camera. This just gives us that moment to breathe, let that high intensity settle down a little bit as we pass into the next phase of the edit. I'll play that through to the next piece here. So that next little part is all the rockier sections in this trail network and we kind of put it all together because it felt like it made sense. And we use this to lead into this cable shot that I'm stopped on here. This cable shot is a rockier area, um, separate part of the trail than those three shots that you just saw, but they felt like they linked together. And so this was again, kind of a bridge from this, we went from autumn sort of shots here, lots of leaves on the ground, to sort of just soil, just regular red dirt. And then we use this little breathing room and then into this rocky section to get us into the cable cam shot that comes next that's also rocky. So it's just trying to figure out that flow that would feel like real terrain would actually behave. One thing you will notice about these if you look closely is there is blue in the sky and you can see it in all these shots a little bit. It's mostly blown out so it's not too bad but we shot these on a full sunny day. We just waited for the, the sun to go behind the mountain so that it wasn't direct sunlight. Um, it, it wasn't ideal but we had to get some shots in the bag and this section is where we were working at that time. And so it works out in the end, but they are a little bit out of character from the rest of the video. These were probably shot on the Tokina 11 to 16, I believe. Some of them might be on the Sigma 18 to 35 as well. This was kind of a tricky one. Trying to make this rock face look large is hard on video. It's always tricky to make features look big on video. So I, I opted to do this one as a profile shot so you could really see the scale of what he was riding in relationship to his bike. So it's almost you know two bike lengths in, in distance from the top of this down to the bottom. So trying to always make stuff look big, uh, look as gnarly as it actually is in the real world. Sometimes a wide angle lens helps with that. Sometimes it just looks like you're trying to make it look big. So it's a, it's a balance. This shot here is on a gimbal. This is with the Sigma 18 to 35 for sure, because I remember this moment because as Mark goes by me, he almost hit me actually. So I was running in front of him, uh, trying to get really close to him, but I ended up very, very close. So as he goes by here, um, that moment where he just passes the camera, we were uh, just a few steps apart. So a little bit scary, but it turned out to be a super awesome shot. Now this leads into the longest cable shot that we have in the video. And it's it's not necessarily the most action packed, but I think it really shows off the environment and it's just this continuous shot that helps embed you in the scene. Um, so we'll play through that one now. Okay, so pretty cool shot. I'm really happy with that one. It was challenging to get mostly because we had a really sunny day the first time that we set it up. Um, we set the line up and then this entire background here is where the sun was and it was just blown out. So this, this area here was all dark. This was all bright, so it wouldn't work. So we had to tear the whole thing down, come back another day, set the whole thing up again to get the shot dialed in, which um, is always frustrating to have to set a cable line twice, but at the end of the day, it was super worth it. We were on a ridge here, and so Mark was above where we were uh, actually setting the line, which made the cable have to be 20 to 30 feet up in the air, which just makes the whole process that much more difficult. And then I jumped up in a ladder to get this shot just as a connector to kind of bring us back into the intense action because we kind of pull further away and the sound goes down and then we go to this shot here from the ladder just running handheld and it brings that intensity back up so we're always going through these moments of uh, slowing the intensity down bringing it back up adding breathing room for the sound and all that stuff so that it's just not constantly hammering you in the face with intense moments um, you got to have room for that story to kind of breathe and have that trail flow um, this next one here is the jump line. So I'll play through this entire next section and then we'll kind of talk through each piece individually.
So this is kind of the, the highlight of the video. This is the part that we wanted to put the most energy into and we really want you to feel the most. And that's because this is the part of the trail network that Mark built. We wanted to highlight this and we did that by shooting things multiple times from multiple angles so that the video stays engaging to watch. And so the first piece here, this is um, a panning shot done handheld, probably with the 35 to 100 Panasonic lens. Um, and I'm just tracking him through his jump line here. And I, again, it's just that really fast motion. This shot was a little tricky to pull off because he's moving quite quickly, being obscured by trees. He's approaching the camera as well. And so just keeping him in the frame can be hard to do, but we eventually got that one. And then we transition into the cable camera shot. And this was by far the hardest and most time consuming shot of the entire video. Um, it took us a day and a half to get this shot. The first day we set the line, did some test runs, but it was sunny all day. We could not get lighting conditions that would allow this to work. In not ideal lighting conditions, it's a super dappled forest, patchy light. Things are either blown out or underexposed, depending on how we set the camera. It just doesn't look good. So we did some practice runs, got it dialed in, felt like relatively confident that we could nail the shot. When we came back the next day, ran this line probably 20 times before we got it. And every time we do it, Mark has to hike to the top. He has to be able to hit it flawlessly from top to bottom. I have to nail the camera movements with the remote control from top to bottom. We both need to do this simultaneously. So it's it was never something that we knew was going to be easy, but it took way more time than we thought. Probably 12 hours maybe for this 10 seconds of footage. Super time consuming shot, but 100% worth all the effort that went into getting it. From here, we actually see this, this jump that we're seeing him take off here is the jump that we're seeing him in right here. So this feature here is this same shot here. Um, and the reason I use it twice is because here you see it from like a, a moving point of view, how, how fast he's going. Um, but here I like it because there's a really cool composition. I like this mossy, um, kind of algae that's formed on the feature itself, but this has this really nice S curve to it. And um, I just thought it was a really neat frame. And I definitely shot this one with the Tokina 11 to 16, uh, just to exaggerate the shape of that curve and really just make it have that really nice swoop to it. I thought that that looked really great and uh, looks super fast. When he rips through that, he's like a rocket. This next frame here is again to slow that motion down. So we've had, We've had a lot of fast action and now we're trying to bring it back down a little bit, give a bit of breathing room until we dive into that next section of action. So this is shot with the Canon uh, 70 to 200. I had it for a few days that I was borrowing from a friend. And when I'm doing a rack focus shot, which I am here, uh, I like to just have the camera set on a tripod, no camera movement, keep it simple, just focusing on bringing that focal plane closer to the camera as Mark approaches. And so that's what's happening in this shot. And then we have this one that is to send him off of the jump. So we're actually seeing some of the same features again. This shot that you're seeing here is actually shot from right here. I'm kind of positioned right next to that jump, um, looking up this direction for that, for that previous shot. And then now we're behind looking at him hit this, hit this jump. And we, I made this cut happen here because I didn't think it was as cool to see his whip from that distance. I thought it was way cooler to see his whip from here. And this shot here is done with a gimbal on a monopod. So I, I have myself positioned and then I push the gimbal forward between these trees, creates a lot of action, creates a lot of movement. And I like how you stay close to his whip for a little bit longer. So with the sound design, we can, we can really hear it really well. And then we flip to the front view so we can see that whip from the front. It's a little bit of a slower feeling shot, but I think when you, you stack it next to that one, it, it feels faster. So I, I, I love all these shots. I love this little section and think it looks super good. This one is done from a ladder actually. So I'm probably, if we go back to this shot here, I think I'm in this tree with a ladder leaning up here um, with the Panasonic 35 to 100, probably zoomed all the way in. And that's how I got that frame. I set the focus point where I think that action is gonna be. So I probably used uh, these ferns here or something like that because I knew that's where his riding would be. Um, then we go into this wider shot. And I think this one again is just to show off the environment. And then we dive into another high speed section where he's actually doing the stump gap. So I'll play through this piece and we'll talk through those frames.
Okay, so that little section there, we jump into a gimbal chase shot. And so that's this one here. It's probably with uh, Sigma 18 to 35, I would guess. And this one, I wanted to bring that action back up, like pump it back up by chasing him, see how fast he's moving. We see him leading into the feature that he's about to do. And you can kind of see what's going on, but not totally. And then the next frame, we see it tight and you can see this guy's way up in the air, but you still can't totally see the feature. And that was done intentionally to just build up that anticipation. And then we go to a long lens shot. And this is shot way at the top of the hill with uh, 35 to 100 again, zoomed all the way in. And this is both just to be kind of an artistic shot that shows some of the forest, adds some foreground elements, but it also is the first time you really see the feature and how big it is as he's clearing that. And then we cut to this shot, which is the first one where you can really take it in in all of its glory, this stump gap that he's built. And you know, it doesn't necessarily look big until you see how small he is in relationship to it. And this, he's probably, I would guess, almost 20 feet in the air there. Um, and we can really see how sideways he is. And we're trying to really exemplify that motion. And so I'm up in a tree for this one as well. And I think this is probably the Tokina 11 to 16, just to be able to see that whole feature being that close to the jump. And then as we land, we see him coming into this next little section. And this is a, a small jump that actually didn't work that well. It wasn't quite finished, um, this part of the trail. This is the last jump on the trail and the trail abruptly ends just because he hasn't finished building everything. The, trail, the, the jump didn't work amazing. So the way that we shot it was to show the takeoff really well and show the landing really well, but didn't really need to show the whole thing in its entirety because it didn't look super fast. Um, so this is again, just an artistic shot. We've got some foreground interest. He goes over it and then we've got this on the ground handheld shot that's really fast. This is a Tokina 11 to 16 for sure. When he hits the ground here, you can almost see the trail actually ends right here. Um, and so that's why the shot cuts really fast. And then we jump to this close up shot of his tires hitting the ground to connect to the next piece of the trail. Um, but that's shot from a completely different section of the trail. It just acts as a connector to link these together. So I'll play through this last section of the video and then we'll talk through that and then we'll move on to some of the questions from Instagram. Okay, so we'll back up here. So you can see how that, that shot here connects into this. Just kind of, it feels like you're the tires are ripping by, which leads us into this next shot here, which is actually a trail that's just adjacent to where his stump gap is. The stump gap actually sits right here next to this. So it was framing that in such a way that you couldn't see the stump. Um, feels like a different section of trail. This shot uh, is probably the 18 to 35, maybe the Tokina 11 to 16 on a gimbal. And I'm just doing a shot where I'm just lifting that over top of my head to add a little bit of movement to that shot. Um, this one here is a panning shot. I'm probably standing somewhere around here for this, this next shot. And I'm just tracking him with all the same with all the other panning shots with the 35 to 100 handheld, just to get that fast motion, try to keep him in frame and keep everything nice and sharp. Uh, this next one here is actually a section of trail that we shot twice. So we first shot it, um, the, the last couple frames of the video are when we first shot it, and then he decided he wanted to try to really hit this as a triple. And this one, you know, he barely misses that tree. And he actually only wanted to do this a couple times because he knew it would be a challenging thing to do. So I'm up in a ladder following him and we got it on the second take. The first take didn't look as great, um, but it was really critical for me to nail that shot. I knew it was hard for Mark to do. I knew there was a certain amount of risk involved and I wanted to make sure that when he nailed it, I had also nailed it so that we didn't have to run it any more than was necessary to capture it for the video. So I'm really glad we got this. I actually kind of like that he almost hits the tree but safely avoids it because it just kind of adds that like, oh geez, that was close factor to the video and um, just makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, then we move into this shot here, which is um, tracking him as he comes into frame. Uh, this is just, again, a little bit of moment of breathing. And then we get into a, one more bit of action where he manuals into that same section of the trail that we just saw. 
And then this shot here is done on the Kessler crane again on the second shooter. Just a nice controlled slider shot. See him rip through the frame really fast, looks pretty cool. Partly to show off the environment, but I think these controlled camera movement shots add a nice element when they're mixed in with all the handheld stuff and all the cable camera stuff. Uh, this next shot here is shot with the drone. It's one of the two drone shots that are in the video. It was really dark actually when we shot this, so it's a bit noisy, but it was just a moment that came out so good. The way he rode this corner, he kind of drifts around the corner. It just looks so cool. So we had to put it in. I had to crank up the exposure quite a bit in post and just accepted that it was a bit noisy because the shot is super cool and I'm glad we, we nailed that one. Um, and then the last shot is this same corner again. This is shot with the 35 to 100. And the thing that I love about this shot the most is that it just felt like a closing shot to the video. When I, I shot this probably on the second or third day, but I was like, that's, that's the last shot of the video. I, I know it because uh, the, the leaves moving and the ferns blowing as he whips by and then everything kind of settles back down to calm mirrors that first shot that we had of the wall ride. So the forest starts calm and the sound comes in and the intensity starts and then the, the sound fades out at the end and the forest returns back to calm. That's kind of the idea here. And to really spice this shot up, all these leaves that are on the trail, we actually added and kind of positioned them so that they would blow by as Mark went over them really fast and we just would add that extra level of um, cool factor basically. So sometimes you just gotta dress your shots up, make them look a little bit more interesting. And then I held this shot extra long to make sure that I captured that forest returning back to normal, essentially. Yeah, I love that shot. And then we run the credits there. So that is the video top to bottom um, from an editing point of view. I do wanna answer a couple questions that were sent to me on Instagram. So I'm gonna take a look at those really quick. What is the most difficult part about filming and editing this project. So the most difficult part of filming was definitely that really long cable camera shot. Um, super frustrating that the weather wasn't cooperating, but once we nailed it, totally happy that we, we had that one in the bag. And then in terms of the editing, um, I think it was probably the sound design. Took a bit of time, it wasn't necessarily difficult, but just making it sound like it was real took a little bit of extra effort. And like I say, we'll talk about that down the line. But the edit for this came together fairly smooth because as we were shooting it, I was actually dropping everything into Premiere that night and I would try to piece it together basically. We were just so pumped on what we were getting, we wanted to, to see it. And so I'd send it over to Mark after we shot it and we'd bounce ideas about what we needed to make it work better. So the edit was, was a pretty smooth editing process. And that one actually kind of leads into another question um, that Milko sent over, and that is, how do you keep your talent interested and motivated for a nine-day shoot? So if you watch the previous video, this, this was a nine-day shoot to get all this one minute and 37 seconds of writing. Um, and part of the way I think we were able to do that was Mark is super passionate. He loves to make really good content. He's a committed writer. This is his job, and so he wants to put out stuff that looks really good. But every night I would send him what we have from the night before and all the previous footage. So we were building that edit as we went. And I think that just helped keep the stoke up for both of us because we'd see how cool the edit was coming along. And this was with no sound design even done. It was just the visuals. Um, and that just kept us motivated to keep getting cool shots, keep putting in that effort and make something that at the end of the day, tons of people would appreciate. So um, that's how I keep people motivated is keep them, keep them pumped by showing them what we're doing. And then the other thing is Mark really likes Twizzlers licorice. So every now and again, I'd bring some candy to, to keep him pumped. <laughs> How did you sync the audio and the video? So that was a little bit tricky. All the video clips were shot with on-camera audio when possible, uh, but things like the cable camera, there is no on-camera audio because the, the cable line itself just makes too much noise. And so for those, we were linking up a long audio clip that Mark would take. Then I would just be looking for moments in that audio clip where he's either leaving the ground or hitting a wood feature or something that was distinct. And I would use that to line the audio clip up with the footage. So you're just looking for those moments where they're leaving a jump or they're coming in contact with the ground and then kind of uh, using that as a guide forward and backward to get the audio clip to line up. Which picture profile did you use and why? So picture profile for pretty much everything I shoot um, is with the GH5 is the natural profile. I have the contrast cranked down a couple notches, saturation cranked down a couple notches and sharpness turned all the way down. The natural profile is pretty solid. I've, I've shot a few projects with V-Log. It 
maybe makes a little bit better image, but the extra time it takes me in exposure and the extra time it takes me in post, I don't feel like is worth it. So I shoot in natural for 99% of my projects and I think it works great. Um, tell us a bit more about your focusing technique. So almost every shot in this video, I pre-focus where the rider's action is going to be happening. So I'll either have Mark stand there or I'll pick a tree that has really distinct bark and I'll use that to focus the shot. Once the shot is in focus, I don't adjust anything. If it's something that there's gonna be action over a period of time, I might uh, make my focal plane deeper by increasing my aperture. Some of the stuff that's on the cable cam, I would have a little bit more of a, a deeper focal plane so that I have a little flexibility in how close the rider needs to be to the camera. But a lot of times the action is happening so fast that you're not gonna even catch if something is slightly out of focus before you're onto the next shot. Um, how many gigs of footage did you get for the whole thing? Um, so I saw this one, I checked beforehand. The whole project was 210 gigabytes. Most of that was taken up by unused footage. So I shot this at 400 megabits per second on the GH5. I wanted a lot of flexibility in post. So I shot in a really high quality codec. And there's probably at least 40 clips of cable cam that are between I don't know, 30 seconds and a minute long that didn't get used. So it's, you know, it's 210 gigabytes, um, but most of that was not used in the final project. Uh, how do you expose the sky and the forest at the same time? This is a really good question. And the biggest thing to make this work is to shoot on overcast days. If the sky is really bright, you're gonna get all these dappled spots in the forest and you're not going to be able to get everything exposed properly. So having that overcast day, you get a nice soft light over the whole forest. The sky might be blown out a little bit, but in that case, I'll just try to frame the shot in a way that you don't see the sky too much. But really that's the secret is shoot on overcast days. If it's sunny, you're just gonna need to wait for those clouds to roll in and you'll be much happier with the results. You won't have those harsh shadows really contrasty lighting. So overcast days are the secret to filming in the forest. What was the biggest challenge when approaching this project? I think um, beyond the cable cam stuff, which you know I, I knew we were gonna use the cable cam for this project. So I've been building the rig up since April or so, um, doing different tests with it, getting the system dialed in, got it to a place where I felt it was workable. That was a big piece of the, the challenge of approaching this project. And then the other part was just getting a microphone set up that would work. And it wasn't really that hard, but it just took a little bit of thinking and, and trial and error, figuring out a system that would be both safe for the rider, but also capture good audio. And so check out the behind the scenes if you haven't seen that yet of how we capture the audio. But I would say getting those unique camera movements and getting that high quality raw audio were the most challenging pieces of this project. If you have other questions about how this edit went, drop it down in the comments below. Also ask me questions about the audio and anything about how I did the audio in post, the audio setup, as well as color grading stuff. I will do that in the next video as well as any other questions you may have. I know this was a really long video, so thank you if you are still sticking with me here. Hopefully you've got some interesting nuggets of information out of this. Until the next one, get out there, make something beautiful, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.